it's Friday and it's time for oh my god it's time for the weekly ice bath oh. 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 start the timer So, an immediate upstat from last week is <laughs> the gardeners aren't around. That's pretty quiet. I can hear some birds. That's really beautiful. Today we have uh, one and a half bags of ice, 30 pounds. I'm doing this ice bath on Friday. Yesterday got to be like three o'clock before I had any time and I hadn't eaten yet. So I chose to eat and put this off till today. I actually think I like it better on Fridays because that leads right into the weekend. And uh, this does take a little bit of recovery time after you've done this. So this will keep my, my Fridays mornings still at very highly productive time. Sounds like a bird fight. Okay. So, had an interesting experience. I do some Uber driving on the weekends and uh, you just meet some really interesting people, but uh, I had a couple, she was 81 in a wheelchair. He was 76, helping her in the wheelchair. Um, she had just had a hip replaced. That's why she was in the wheelchair and moving kind of slow, gingerly. And uh, so they get in my car, you know, and we have about a 10 minute drive. And uh, I said, uh, I don't know what I said, but anyway, she said, he wants to marry me. <laughs> I said, really? At your age, you guys want to get married? She goes, well, I'm not sure yet. I've been single a long time. She'd been married two times, but not in the last 33 years. And she was talking about how she likes her, you know, her own space. And even if they got married, she still have her own apartment. And, and I said, well, at this stage in your life, why do you want to get married? What would be different? And he went off on some religious thing. He's a Mormon. And uh, I said, oh, okay, well. And we got to the final location, you know, the destination, the drop-off point. And I was helping her out of the car. And she said, you know why he wants to marry me? He wants to take care of me. Most men want to take care of a woman. And I thought, huh. I said, I think you're right. Not all, but most. So that's something to think about, you know. I know that in my most recent uh, relationship with Nampoon, that was definitely a part of it that I enjoyed very much, it was taking care of her, knowing she didn't really have to work and she could live her life and take care of her family and everything was great. Um, so that kind of rang true for me. But very interesting that people at that age thinking of getting married. So I found it inspiring actually. And speaking of old people <laughs> thinking about getting married, this fucking ice bath is dedicated to David W. David W. Uh, I have uh, often said David W. is my best friend, that there isn't anything about me that he doesn't know. And uh, I'm sure there's stuff about him I don't know. I think he's a little more secretive than me, but uh, I know a lot. 
uh, but he definitely knows where all the skeletons are buried <laughs> in my case. Um, so just, I've known David for also for 20 years. He was in a men's group that I was leading and then he did one of the first men's events that I, I delivered. And then he also did, um, the grail. And, uh, I told you before that I organized six of the grail events. Well, each time David was my right hand guy. He was, uh, he usually handled the kitchen and he was so dependable. And I just told him, I don't think I could have done it without him um, by my side. Um, uh, so, we, so we shared a lot of what we call sacred space, ritual space together. Um, and you know, you kind of let everything out. You surrender to everything. So we've been through some really remarkable experiences together. Um, oh, that's, that's our air conditioner. Just kicking on there, making a little noise. But uh, <laughs> this is how brutally <laughs> honest David W. is. This was in 2004 or five. We were, <laughs> we were at an event. Uh, actually, where I lived, there was a, a big old barn. We, we did a, a grail event there. And uh, at some point, David <laughs> spoke <laughs> these words, which <laughs> ring true for most <laughs> men. Uh, there are a few caveats, but he said, if I'm completely honest, <laughs> the only thing that really matters <laughs> is my dick. <laughs> and I think we all, the men were sort of dumbfounded by the, the, the honesty and the candor and, and the truthfulness that so much of what drives men <laughs> is getting laid. And uh, it was just great, just a great thing to be said out loud. And uh, <laughs> something we'll never forget, uh, those of us who were there for that. Um, Keisha, who's um, one, of, one of the other guides, I told you Marsh is a guide, Keisha is a more senior guide. And uh, she was one of the creators of the event, actually. And she was, um, when I did my first grail as a participant, she was one of the guides. And uh, one day she said to me, she said, your relationship with David is, um, he's the good king. He's, he's like King Arthur. And, and Jay, you, you are more like Merlin, the wizard. And I thought, that's, that's, that summed it up pretty well. He's the good king. I'm the sneaky fuck <laughs> making the magic happen. And uh, so he's been, a, he's been a really good friend to me. Um, if I've ever needed anything, he's someone I could turn to and know I won't get turned down. Um, and likewise, you know, if you need something from me, I'll do whatever I can for him. Um, we took a trip together to Mexico uh, and that was really fun uh, most of my men friends I don't really take trips with um, but he said let's go to Zihuatneo and we did for a wonderful weekend of you know being on this on the beach and it was warm and the water was warm and we could swim and eat good food and it was just a wonderful wonderful experience uh, I, hope, I hope we do that again trying to convince him to go to Thailand with me um, we'll see and now David's um, kind of at a crossroads he's is a very successful career uh, is coming to an end and he's really what's what's next for him what's next for him in terms of companionship and what's next in terms of work or projects um, he's figuring all that out he's I think three or four years older than me so I keep saying in my head I really hope by the time I'm where Dave, David's age, I'm where David's at in life. Um, so he's been a tremendous role model um, in that way for me. So David, this ice bath, the pain and the suffering uh, converts to healing energy and wisdom. And it's 
blowing all at you today. So I love you and thank you for being my friend. And uh, if I die before you, I hope you speak at my service and uh, tell some truthful things about me. And I promise if you go first, I'll do the same for you. If you want me to, you may not. There you go. So I'm at the point in the uh, ice bath where it doesn't feel cold anymore, even though I shiver a little bit. Um, my body's just adjusted to it. It's particularly warm outside today. It's probably, it's probably like 80 right now, 80, 85. Um, blows my mind that 10 minutes has gone by. I do find though that when I'm talking about somebody, that time just wisps away. Yeah. Oh, let me see. Oh, the temperature we've got. 49. I found that a trick to getting it as cold as possible is put put like three quarters of the ice in first and let that let the water get cold all the way from when you first start putting the water in. Then top it off with a little bit of ice at the top. And that way it'll be colder. But since it's so warm, um, I think that's why it's not water isn't quite as cold today. I've also really liked this little trick I've learned of putting my hands out of the water. Because that was actually the most painful part, was having my hands out of the water, uh, having my hands in the water, and just putting them right here in the warm sun. Uh, doesn't stop the rest of my body from having goosebumps and shivering, but um, it's not, not painful. So I've been thinking about this all morning. I cannot not think about the ice bath today I'm gonna do it, and how much I fear it and uh, try to justify not doing it. I'm sure that'll abate over time as I do more of these. This is my ninth one. And it's not as bad certainly as the first one or the second one, but it still really clouds my morning. But after this, I'm gonna dry off, warm up, and eat some chicken thighs and some salad. And that'll be nice and watch a movie. That's the view there, that's the view there, and that's the view up there. Paulina, if you're watching this, you're happy, be happy to know I did put my SPF uh, cream on. Oh, I am going to the doctor on Monday to have, I don't know if you can see it, and I had a little red mark here, like a little blemish, and also here, which have been there for about a month. And this one kind of itches, so, I wanted to have it looked at um, and see if they can give me a cream or something to uh, make it heal. Other than that, my life's just the same. I wrote 11 articles last week. I have one more to write, and then uh, next week I'm going to do 12 videos all on rideshare driving planning a trip in July to Thailand to get my visa renewed. It'll be a short trip, like 12 days. Um, not sure 100% yet if I'm going to do that, um, but it's a real pain to get your visa, to have to start over again, to get the one-year visa. So it might just be easier to go there and renew it. Wow. This, this time has gone fast. I think it's so much easier when the sun is shining and it's warm outside. Plus, it was, it was really fun to talk about David. I have so many good memories of me and David doing things together.
Okay, they say 15 minutes beyond that hypothermia, so I gotta get out now. Okay, here we go. Ooh.